Welcome to Life from God's Perspective. We are still continuing with the, the series we started last time, and that is Single Eye Living. This is the third episode, probably the last episode for now, concerning Single Eye Living. Now, if you have not listened to the episode I have you know, shared before now, you need to listen to it. We started by saying that your perspective determines your conclusions. Jesus said, he said, the light of the body is the eye. You can find that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. Then he says, if your eye is single, then your whole body will be full of light. That simply means if you have the right perspective, if you have God's perspective, then your whole body will be full of light. That is, your conclusions about reality will be right. You went ahead to say, but if your eyes is evil, that means if your perspective is not that of God, if it is simply a human, temporal, worldly perspective, then your whole body will be full of darkness. What that simply means is that your conclusions about reality will be wrong. And Jesus said that is a bad idea. It's a bad thing to do. It's a wrong thing to happen to you. And by the way, this wrong perspective is generated by another action. That action is where you choose as the prime place to lay up wealth for yourself. Jesus said, don't lay up for yourself on earth. He said, you will lose them. He said, don't, he said, instead, lay off yourself wealth or treasures in heaven. And he gave a reason, another reason. He said, because where your treasure is, your heart will see things from that perspective. Now, I can go back to recap everything we've done so far. So, I ask you to listen to the episodes that we've done before now. And in the last episode, Jesus said something very very interesting. He said, you cannot serve two masters. Who you serve starts from the perspective you adopt. If you have adopted the wrong perspective, even if you meant to serve Jesus, you end up serving mama. You can be very loud on Jesus, but you end up serving mama if you adopted a wrong perspective. So, that if you store up your wealth in heaven and your heart is seeing things from heaven's perspective, then your whole body will be full of light and you will actually serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, today, I just want to add to what we've learned so far. You can actually get free from error. You can maintain a life of truth, walking in the truth always. It's not difficult to walk in the truth. It's not difficult to keep to the truth, to, to, to read the Bible and come up with the truth. It is not difficult. So how do you do that? Let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. What does it say? They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, here in this portion of scripture we've just read, that is 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Jesus said, I mean the Holy Spirit speaking through John, said it is easy to differentiate the truth from a lie. He says, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. Verse 6 says, we are of God, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. Then he added something. He said, by this we know the spirit of truth. Why? How do we know the spirit of truth? They speak from God's perspective. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. How do we know the spirit of error? They speak from this world perspective. Let's look at this scripture 
from New Living Translation. I read again from verse 5. It says, These people belong to this world, so they speak from the, from the world's viewpoint. These people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint. And the world listens to them. Verse 6 says, But we belong to God. That is why those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. And pay great attention to what follows. So that is how we know if someone has a spirit of truth or a spirit of deception. So the people of the world speak from the world's perspective. If they want to speak about Wealth, they speak of it from the world's perspective. They speak of it from how, what it can do in this world and things like that. That's the world's perspective. If they want to speak of houses and lands, they speak of them from the world's perspective. If they want to speak of education, they speak of them from the world's perspective. If they speak of relationship, marriage, they speak of it from the world's perspective. If they want to speak about business, in how to make money and success is going to be from the world's perspective. And you know what? The world will applaud our own perspective. The Bible says the world listens to them. But if you are a child of God, you cannot go in that direction. I mean, you have to adopt Jesus' perspective or viewpoint concerning success, concerning relationship, concerning money, concerning every other thing in life. And, you know, the Bible says this is how we know whether someone has a spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. From which perspective does he speak? From whose viewpoint does it come into things? Is it from Jesus' viewpoint or the world's viewpoint? For instance, if you're talking about Jesus' viewpoints, the Bible says the, that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of what he owns. But the world talk, talks about what you are worth. They present your life as consisting in the abundance of what you own. So somebody who follows Jesus' perspective will respect people, value people, not based on just because of what they own. Now, if you respect people based on what they own, or even if you feel inferior in the presence of certain people because they own more than you, you are judging wealth from world's worldly perspective. And you are in error. If you respect people simply because of what they own, you are in error. So we ought to evaluate all these things from Jesus' perspective, not from the world's perspective. How do we evaluate marriage or relationship? Some people say, well, character doesn't matter. It's only looks that matters. Well, if you say that, you'll be evaluating relationship from the worldly perspective. And you'll be right according to the world. But for God, no, it's not like that. The Bible said God sees on the inside. Man may see on the outside. And God's children follow his example to examine the contents of people's lives not just their looks okay now we can differentiate between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth by actually evaluating from whose point of view someone speak so let us to speak from God's point of view now apostle John went ahead in John, the third John, chapter 1, verse 4. He, he expressed gladness that his children walk in the truth. I want to read it for us. Third John, verse 4. He says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Now, that's very important because it is the truth that matters. When you walk in the truth, you walk securely. When you evaluate all of life from single eyes, that is from God's perspective, 
God's viewpoint, you arrive at the truth. And if that is what informs your work, you are working securely, Satan cannot get you, you cannot lose a single battle in your life, and you can have a good marriage in these last days, you can raise good children in these last days, you can run a business devoid of, of corruption in these last days, if you adopt just a single eye perspective to life. Single perspective to life. Single eye life. Okay? So John says, I have no better joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Now, God is inviting you to walk in the truth. Adopt single eye living and evaluate all of life from just God's perspective. Now, I will show you what the Apostle Paul had to say about this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. I would I will read. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Let me read from the New Living Translation. So we have stopped evaluating others by what the world thinks about them. Once I mistakenly thought of Christ that way, as though he were merely a human being. How differently I think about him now. Paul the Apostle may have encountered things in his life that made him come to this conclusion that from now on, he will evaluate nothing, no human being from the worldly point of view. He will evaluate things, he will evaluate human beings from heaven's point of view, God's eternal point of view. Do you know that if you are nothing in eternity, you are actually nothing now? People may see you as something, but that is deception. They are being deceived to appreciate nothing as something. Whatever is not true right now about you in eternity is not true now. Whatever about you is not true in eternity is not true now. So Paul said, look, I will not evaluate anybody or in anything from the world point of view. That will be deceiving myself. That will be in ascribing value to something that has no value, actually. If something doesn't have value by God's standard, then it is valueless for a child of God. If something that is valueless before God becomes very valuable to you, then something is wrong with your perspective to life. You are using a standard other than God, and you may experience the same scolding that the Laodicean church experienced. When Jesus told them, He said, because you have said that I am rich, I am wealthy, I have no need of anything. He said, but you don't know that you are poor, you are wretched, you are naked, and you are blind. It's time to use Jesus' standard in evaluating all of life. Jesus' eternal standard. Now, if, if you don't have this standard, you can acquire them through the scripture. If you have not given your life to Christ, it's difficult for you to have this standard. So I'm inviting you to give your life to Christ today. Jesus died for you, that you might be saved. Let's bow our heads to pray. If you like to give your life to Christ, so that you can flow with Jesus' standard, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. Please come and save me. Forgive my sins and make me your child. As from today, I stop looking at life from human temporal perspective. I deny my rights to have my own perspective to life. I adopt your own perspective. I live by it. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' name. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart.